Rogers Anderson, Williams County's mayor. And today, we're taking a little bit of a different change and a variation from what we normally do on our show by pick, finding and picking people in our community or in our departments or other elected officials. We're dedicating this show, which is going to air in March, was uh, for the Red Cross. And the reason is Red Cross Month. It and is. with us, we have a couple of Red Cross uh, representatives, actually one from Murfreesboro and one local here. Some of you may recognize his face, Jim Fickle, that's uh, been with the Red Cross about a year, but um, he's had some other involvements in our community. I'm sure some of you may recognize him. So as we get into the show, Jim, would you take the honors and introduce our your special <laughs> guest? Sure. And as we cover the day, and then tell us a little bit about each of you, where you come from, and, and how you got involved with the Red Cross, and then we'll get into what the Red Cross means to Williamson County. Sure. Uh, this is, on my right is Beth Toll. She's our re regional communications director for the for the kind of mid-Tennessee area, which is 62 counties, basically from Memphis to Cookville. Um, and so she's fortunate to be here, uh, fortunate to have her here today to, uh, to talk about what the Red Cross does on a more regional level. Um, how I got involved with the Red Cross is, it's kind of interesting, you know, I got I have the good fortune of working with Dr. Farrell, who may, I'm sure many of you, many people know Dr. Farrell, and, and he was much more than a physician, and he encouraged people who worked with him to be much more than a physician. And so that got me interested in, in what I could do, and then, uh, and, ran into our, had a good friend of yours, uh, Jim Carroll, who helped out my career when I was starting out at Vanderbilt. And so I had emailed him and he happened to be meeting with the CEO of the Nashville chapter at that exact moment. And that's how I got involved with the Red Cross. Great. Beth, yeah. how did you get started? Well, I've been with the Red Cross <coughs> now uh, almost a decade and um, graduated of the University of Tennessee and started out uh, back where I'm from in Chattanooga originally and worked there for a couple years and then moved up to Murfreesboro and actually worked as a development director for several years and then took on my current role um, based out of the Nashville office just a few years ago. So I'm really excited to uh, work for the Red Cross. It's a great organization and it's been a great career for me. This is probably nothing new for you then to be in the communication studio and the TV and doing these things. And today we're going to touch on what the Red Cross means to not just Williamson County, although the show is originating here in Franklin, but it has tentacles that go out all across. Red Cross is uh, certainly an organization that's uh, all over the United States and the world. Mm -hmm. So. Jim, kind of talk to us, either you or Beth, either one. What is the mission of the Red Cross? We hear so much about the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. How do they get involved? Why do they get involved? Mm -hmm. And probably most of all, how can our how can our viewers get involved? Sure. Uh, you know, Red Cross was formed actually in 1881, and it was actually formed by a Civil War nurse, Clara Barton, and her main goal was to to help the wounded and help those who'd been injured during the Civil War. And and that's really where it kind of came from. The mission has changed and kind of evolved somewhat, um, but really it, its main focus is to prevent and alleviate human suffering uh, in the time of emergencies uh, by mobilizing volunteers uh, and gathering resources. And if you use that main mission statement throughout their five lines of service, so certainly we know about their disaster relief both here and then around the world, you know, being able to mobilize volunteers uh, and services and goods to those emergencies. Locally also, you know, blood donation is probably one of the most recognizable mm -hmm. things that the Red Cross does, supplying about 40 percent of the blood nationwide uh, to the hospitals. Locally, certainly preparedness, health and safety, so CPR classes, babysitting, first aid, um, that's a main goal because we want to prevent these things. Uh, that's ultimately, you know, home disasters is the number one thing that we respond to. So if there's any way we can prevent those, we want to educate people in local communities to, to help prevent that. Beth, when you first started with the Red Cross 10 years ago, I'm sure there were um, basically the same missions, but over time, every day, just like in govern government, we change our governor's policy. We make a different direction here and there. <clears throat> and you've been in the communication side, I'm sure you've just got a wealth of knowledge 
that could be shared with our viewing audience. How do they get involved? In well, you know, we like to say with the American Red Cross that we help people that are down the street and across the world. And that's really true. It's an international organization. And we do serve our neighbors in need every single day. So, you know, a lot of times you think of the Red Cross when you hear about the major disasters, whether it's a, you know, a typhoon or a hurricane, or obviously most recently uh, these really severe winter storms that have been affecting our area and all across the country. But what a lot of people maybe don't realize is that we're also right here in the community in Williamson County and we're responding to house fires almost every single night. So, uh, and when a house fire happens, the Red Cross is notified. We send our on-call volunteers who are on duty. It's our disaster action team they're on call 24 7 and they'll go out respond uh, to help those folks who have been affected and they'll provide assistance in the form of maybe emergency food lodging if medications were lost in the disaster we will help replace those and really just help to meet those basic emergency needs so i would definitely say that you know, one of our biggest needs in the community is, is more volunteers to serve on those disaster action teams because it's a big commitment and we rely, you know, very heavily on those people to be able to respond 24 seven. You know, as Jim mentioned, yeah. we mobilize the power of volunteers. So we really, really rely on those folks to be able to go out in the middle of the night when it's cold and rainy and snowing and, and to be able to help those people. Well, we're glad to help here with this TV show to make a focus uh, attempt to say this particular month, the month of March, mm -hmm. is American Red Cross. But how do people get involved? Now, we don't normally uh, on the show ask for solicitations, and we're not going to today. But mm -hmm. but one of the things that people will be watching this show and say, well, I really um, I really can't help. I don't know anything about it. Help mm -hmm. us out here a little bit, Jim. How do they contact you? What can people do? Mm -hmm. So the one of the easiest ways is online. So going to the Red Cross org website which we can certainly provide uh, calling our local chapter um, at the Natchez Trace chapter covers the five local counties Perry Hickman Lewis Margate but predominantly Williamson um, and that number is seven nine zero five seven eight five and you know we're more than willing to take all the volunteers we can because it's really it's a volunteer driven organization and help Beth if uh, someone called is there any training, any special training they have to go through? I mean, how much time are we looking that an individual would have to commit to doing something? Or is it you just got supplies you wanted? Well, mm -hmm. certainly, and there's a lot of different avenues that people can get involved, um, and not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be a disaster volunteer. There's other sure. ways that you can volunteer, and really, you know, as Jim mentioned, get in touch with that, the local chapter, the Natchez Trace chapter, they're going to be able to point you in the right direction, um, and help you set up, whether it's even if you just want to come in for a few hours and help answer phones in the office, or help with some filing office work. Um, but as far as disaster volunteers go, we do offer uh, free training courses for those disaster volunteers because we want to make sure that they understand what they're getting into and that they understand um, the pro appropriate protocol as far as filling out the casework and meeting with the clients. And there's a lot of steps that go into it. So we do offer lots of free training courses for anyone that does want to become a disaster volunteer. And the really interesting thing about it is you can choose to volunteer right here in your community or you can also choose to go out on national deployment so you could deploy anywhere across the u.s uh, to be helping with with all sorts of disasters and so we love to have our volunteers help here at home and you know across the country as well when when we're needed you know we're just finishing up a very cold and as far as i'm <laughs> concerned a miserable <laughs> winter here in the middle of tennessee mm -hmm. area however it's not been as bad as some of the areas around us. We've been very fortunate here, mm -hmm. here in uh, Williamson County. That we've had uh, a couple of snow days that we've had to attend, we attend uh, as far as our children are concerned. But mm -hmm. some of the other counties south of us, north of us, and certainly uh, on the eastern coast of the United States, I read through some of the brochures here, you all uh, attack or involved in over 70,000 disasters a year. That's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. So there is a huge need for men and women mm -hmm. uh, to help in this volunteer effort. But on the local yeah. level, can we touch on that a little bit more? If they're gonna call this telephone number mm -hmm. and they're, they're gonna wanna get involved and more people will know about the 
the blood drives that we have. We host them here a half a dozen times a year at the, at the administrative complex and throughout our county. Mm -hmm. But there are people out there that during a, a particular tornado or flood event, they want to get involved, but you know, they didn't call ahead of time. Can they? And what are some of the ways they can, they can help out? Certainly, you know, calling the office can, can is a way that most probably direct way, you know, in an emergency around a disaster to, to help out. And, and, and as Beth was saying, it could be when disasters happen and we open shelters, there's a lot of paperwork, there's a lot of people involved in, in running those shelters. And it can be as simple as moving water from the, our main office to that shelter. And, and really, it's, it don't need medical uh, training, you don't need full disaster training to be able to, to help out. And, and really moving supplies is, is the easiest way and, and tracking people because, you know, families want to know where their loved ones are and, and really managing where people are is a huge aspect of it and, and everyone can get involved with that. Knowing that the American Red Cross is majority made up, majority is made up a majority of volunteers. Mm -hmm. I know personally because my role as the mayor here in Williamson County, we have a huge connect with Red Cross and other organizations through our emergency management department that we have right here in our, mm -hmm. in our own counties, in our cities, that work hand in hand, glove in glove, to mm -hmm. um, help out during those uh, minor events or large events. Mm -hmm. Beth, when you, when you look at your 60 plus counties, are there some areas that you just re really need more specialized attention than others? Um, is there a real calling out here in the month of March that says this is American Red Cross, we, 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 we need help, we need volunteers, we need Help me out with a little sure. bit. Sure, um, and you know, he was mentioning anybody can be a Red Cross volunteer, and really no matter what it is that you do in, in, the, in the real world, we can kind of find a niche for you within the Red Cross, uh, but two really specialized positions that we do look for uh, in, in certain Red Cross volunteers that we are kind of always needing. Um, one of those is, is nurses. We're always looking for nurses, and as Jim mentioned, when a Red Cross shelter opens, we try to always have a Red Cross nurse there on the scene to make sure as clients are coming in, um, if they have any medical needs, if they've lost their prescriptions, or anything of that nature, that they're able to get immediate assistance um, with all those medical needs. And then. Uh, one thing that you know people don't necessarily always think about is the Red Cross also also works to uh, help meet emotional needs. So we always try to have counselors there on site. You know, disaster is very traumatic, and so we want people to feel um, that they can kind of help work through some of those issues. So we're always looking for mental health professionals as well because that's a very important part of what we do an important part of help getting us from the response phase into the recovery phase, which is ultimately where we want to go uh, during a big disaster. Jim, I know that the Red Cross is, um, has the ability, working through apps, mm -hmm. technology world we live in today, um, it's great uh, to be able to volunteer uh, for, this, for the generation that's well under me in age. <laughs> Uh, the whole world is made up much more of the IT world mm -hmm. than it is just knocking on the door and showing up and helping in a, at a, a, a disaster. Kind of talk us through, uh, if you don't mind, for those folks that that are want to participate but they don't have a computer or mm -hmm. they don't know how to operate a computer. Talk about them and then talk about the, the your age uh -huh. that's more involved in the applicational process through the IT framework. Mm -hmm. Well, fortunately, you know, the American Red Cross is still a very personal organization, and, and we rely on communications and, and people being there and present, not just the IT, which is, which is good. And so um, from the non-IT people, uh, certainly calling, going to, the, to our Red Cross office building, which is, you know, in the county agency building on West Folks, um, and just walking in, and we can get you involved that way. From an IT standpoint, the app is great in that it shows uh, safety for fire, tornadoes, how to make a, uh, a disaster emergency plan for your own house and uh, how to make your own kit. And um, so it's, it's great, it's all encompassing for these times of need. 
I think it is important for people to realize that in those disastrous times, those tornadoes, that your preparedness, the ones that preparedness that, that he or she may have for themselves or for their family during a major tornado, mm. um, just saves a lot of backbone on the part of the American Red Cross and us as we're rushing out to the local supermarket to try to uh, get oh, the exactly. water and <laughs> yeah. get all the things we need. And, exactly. and I think that's critical sometimes that we, we overlook. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to have those natural disasters from time to time. We're mm -hmm. going to have house fires, like you mm -hmm. said, almost right. on a daily basis in mm -hmm. your community. And oftentimes, as we see on the, the national networks or the local TV stations, um, you see the big cross mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a representative of helping those those mm -hmm. people out in our communities. Beth, you, you cover a wide uh, swat, I mean a large area uh, out there. What's a normal day like? Is, is it doing TV shows, asking for volunteers? Um, just exactly, I mean, if you went up at 40,000 foot uh, level and, and, and you could have whatever you wanted. What in the world would that be? Well, uh, my my role with the Red Cross uh, is really about helping to tell the Red Cross story. And so it's my job to really help showcase what volunteers are doing in our communities every single day. And I do a lot of that through uh, TV interviews. I do a lot of that through uh, sending out press releases about information that's going on and a lot of social media interaction. So, you know, as we were talking about how it's kind of a new digital age, we do a lot of interaction with social media within the Red Cross. So we're always pushing out photos, we're pushing out local information. I tr it's my goal to really try and, and do a Facebook post or a tweet from the Natchez Trace chapter, Facebook and Twitter page, every time we're responding to a fire. So we like to be a part of that kind of online conversation that's going on and we feel like we're an important part of that so we love for people you know if you are you know really connected and you're on Facebook and Twitter we would love for uh, for you to follow us and uh, just to see what the Red Cross is doing in your community every day because I think you really will be surprised at how much the Red Cross is truly doing each and every day. Jim shift back to the local level here. Mm -hmm. um, supplies? Do you need them? Do you not need them? How do we get them to you? I think there's always a need for supplies um, uh, and and warehousing those supplies um, and and more availability of those supplies. So if you're a company that has, um, let's say, a grocery store chain and you have access to water, making that available to us when a disaster does happen, or if you have space, you know, we have great relationships with a lot of churches and and government here to, to create shelters and, and to mobilize those things. So certainly even clots, cots, blankets, uh, toys for kids. You know, we don't want to forget about kids in these shelters. So, you know, donating all these, donating these supplies are important and uh, certainly going through the chapter office. I don't know which one to direct this question <laughs> to, but probably Outside of disasters, I think of the Red Cross as the blood mobile, mm -hmm. giving blood on a mm -hmm. monthly or mo a quarterly basis, depending. Yeah. How does one do that, and what impact does that have uh, here in the local level and, mm -hmm. and in the Middle Tennessee area? So. Oh, okay. I, uh, well, the Tennessee uh, Valley Blood Services region does cover here in Williamson County. And so uh, we really do try to encourage people when there's a need to, to donate blood. And really every blood donation can help save up to three lives. So I think that's people may not realize that or they may be scared to donate. But it's important to realize that it really does make a difference. And we do encourage people, you know, if you're interested in donating blood, if you've never done it before, go to redcrossblood.org and you can find out where is the nearest location to you and make it a convenient easy stop but yeah it's definitely an important piece of, of what we do at the Red Cross. Our region covers 58 to 60 hospitals uh, and they use about 500 units of blood a day and so there's a there's always a need for blood we can't manufacture it and so. Some, some people will say well I like to give blood but I don't know that I can. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to, again, reach out to the, to go to redcrossblood.org uh, and then connect with someone, um, a professional at the Red Cross that can help you with those guidelines because we do get those questions each and every day and mm -hmm. I think it's important from our standpoint, the chapter, we direct those to the professionals uh, sure. in our blood services division. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that 
that they're able to answer those questions from the public because it's definitely again mm -hmm. a, an important part of our mission. And, and there's certainly a, a, you know questions that get asked as you go to sign up for a blood drive and you can walk up to a lot of blood drives and they will take you through the process. Mm -hmm. They'll check your blood pressure, they'll make sure you're not anemic or and make sure that you have enough blood uh, to donate and, and then they'll go through your your health questionnaire and determine if you are a good candidate or not. Many of the folks watching this show probably know where the Red Cross is located here in Franklin, but for those that don't, it's over behind the Carter House. It's in our community service building, so mm -hmm. Folk Street. But if you, if, if you have an opportunity, I really encourage you to stop by and see the operations that's going on here in your community, here mm -hmm. in Franklin and Williamson County. And that office kind of serves is the home base for so many activities we do throughout the county. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly off the top of my head how many people work down there, but maybe you could help me out a little bit here. So it, our chapter CEO is John Mitchell, uh, who's been with the Red Cross for a number of years. And, and unfortunately, John was not able to be with us today yes. because of some, uh, some health issues with one of his family members. Mm -hmm. yeah, and certainly our thoughts go out to him sure. and his family. Um, and then we have, we actually have part-time help uh, that work, the answers the phones, uh, a lot of office support. Uh, then we also are, you know, we have a volunteer coordinator, we have a disaster coordinator uh, at that office. So it's just kind of a skeleton crew. It is. Uh, through the Red Cross and, it, and really it is driven by volunteers. Is that typical, Beth, as you're across the areas in, in the multi county area you represent? It is, and I think most of my um, <coughs> fellow uh, fellow employees would say that, you know, we're, we're certainly not overstaffed. Uh, that's not an issue. <laughs> if anything, you know, we are. We're, we're working with very minimal staffing resources. So, you know, back to that point of mobilizing the power of volunteers, I, I can't stress enough how heavily we depend on, on folks in the community to give us their time and talent. Um, mm -hmm. because we really, it, we couldn't make it happen without them. There's just, mm -hmm. you know, I can't run 24 hours a day, so unfortunately. So I rely, even in my, my role, I rely on volunteers to help me with public affairs. So uh, folks that can go on and, and help do um, interviews just like this and help me with writing and press releases. So there's really, you know, again, there's so mm -hmm. many different opportunities. And whether, it's, whether or not it's disaster, it mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be disaster. So there's just a lot of different uh, roles within the Red Cross. I think mm -hmm. it's important and to point out that if you're watching this show and you're kind of flipping in between channels or locking in on us. Mm -hmm. There's a place for you to do something with the American Red Cross. There's a spot for you if it's nothing more than just answering the phone and sending out some thank you notes. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're watching this show, put the, put the, tell us the phone number one more time. Come by and see us on Fork mm -hmm. Avenue. We've got about five minutes left and we want to kind of ask you some questions individually, but the phone number again is 615-790-5785. And we're located right in behind the Carter House, yeah. come in off Folks, uh, Folk Street, and that office is open the biggest majority of the time, but we could open it more mm -hmm. if we had more volunteers. Yeah, more people staff the front, front door. Front door. Yeah. Got a few minutes left. What have we overlooked that you want to discuss or say this morning? I would just like to hit again on, on local, what our chapter does. I mean, we're, our chapter, we've taught almost 2,000 people last year, first aid, CPR, babysitting classes. We've had 90 local disasters that we've helped, you know, almost 250 people, you know, in that acute time of need, provide them with a place to stay, money to buy clothes and groceries. We have reached out to one of our services is to contact armed services and so we've contacted 96 service members who's serving our country because we're the primary network to connect service members to their families and so we've we've done that in their times of in their family times of need and so there's a lot going on locally uh, driven by volunteers that uh, really helps out our neighbors and I think it's important I'll, I'll go to Beth here let her touch on this too but mm -hmm. um, Many years ago, I was in the military, and I served for four years. And there was an occasion that my particular roommate uh, had to use the services of the Red Cross from um, 
I don't remember if it was his mother or father, but a close member had passed away and they were trying to get in contact. Mm -hmm. um, and he lived in a very rural part uh -huh. of, uh, of the state. And so that, I, th I think sometimes we don't put that connection. So I appreciate you bringing mm -hmm. that out. Beth, mm -hmm. other things? Well, and you know, to expand on that, that's kind of where the Red Cross initiated mm -hmm. with uh, Clara Barton on the battlefields. And, and she was writing letters home to families of soldiers. So I love that we've a been able to take that, how we started from our, our beginnings. And we're still essentially doing that today. And I think mm -hmm. one other thing to touch upon that we kind of mentioned earlier is that preparedness aspect. And I think mm -hmm. that's something everybody can do, whether or not you have the time to volunteer here is mm -hmm. build your kit, make your plan, and be informed. So putting together that disaster kit, making sure that you've got enough water, you've got food, blankets, um, batteries, flashlights, all of those items that you really need to have to make a, a really strong preparedness kit. Have one at home, have one in your vehicle. Make sure that you know your plan and your family knows your plan for when disaster strikes. And I would also throw in, before we forget it, a, a list of your medicines. Yes. Absolutely, oh, yeah. that's very important. Yeah. You want to make sure that you have that, you know, because you just don't know where, you know, if you need to have that meeting place. And I think a lot of the children study that in school and building that fire escape plan. But it's you know, important to practice that, to know what are you going to do in a tornado? What are you going to do uh, if a house fire, you know, if your house catches on fire? And that's mm -hmm. another, uh, we mentioned the, the Red Cross apps earlier. Yeah. There's an app for almost everything. <laughs> and, and if you just search Red Cross apps, we have those great apps, the yeah. tornado app, the first aid app, especially, those are the probably the key apps that uh, yeah. for our area here that I would encourage people to download, and they're free. Mm -hmm. There's room for all of us to be involved in the American Red Cross. There certainly is. There's room for us to be involved in the American Red Cross here in Williamson County. Mm -hmm. There's a way to get involved. There is. One more time, we're going to throw it up on the screen. 615-790-5785. Jim, Beth, we appreciate you being here. I've got one minute left. What have I overlooked that you want to touch on? March is American Red Cross Month. I just want to say thank you. I want to thank you for having us here to talk about March's Red Cross Month and give us a chance to talk more about the Red Cross. I want to thank our volunteers who do the, the work of the Red Cross, uh, who are there for our, our neighbors and, and our citizens. Red Cross is important in every community. It's important to you it's mm -hmm. important to me mm -hmm. and we encourage you one more time give us that phone number 615-790-5785 call them get yes. involved i'm rogers anderson williamson county's mayor we'll see you around the next time have a good day